Hello and welcome to 9th Series 8 Metagame Monday, where I take a look at popular team archetype, explain how and why it says work, how to beat it, and how it matches up against the other archetypes in form of replays. So today's episode is about Xenius, right? Right? Uh, the appearance of this team is deceiving. Xenius has so many bad matchups in the current metagame, that it has to rely on other modes of the team without help of restricted Pokemon because Xenius is already restricted uh, to work. So the main mode of this team actually is Charizard plus Sableye. Uh, this uh, first three Pokemon are absolutely deceiving. You see Intimidator, Xenius and Red Reaction next to each other in first three slots, which lures opponent into thinking and counteracting the Xenius mode, which often requires a Steel type or a Sun, Sun mode like uh, Venusaur or Poison types like Amigus and Venusaur, which are all both Grass types, which of course Charizard absolutely loves. So uh, the main mode of this team is really the Charizard. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory Charizard as well, it really wants to run max speed, uh, there's some EV optimization, but it's really a huge powerhouse with G-Max Vladfar, it's an absolutely fantastic move, doing one-sixth of the opponent's health to both of the Pokemon for four turns as long as they're not fire types, it's ridiculous. Scorching Sands and the Max Quake raises the special defense, may, which makes Charizard even more resilient against the electric and motor types, and it hits Incinera really hard and one shot it actually. And Max Earthstream uh, makes it even more potent sweeper. Uh, with bo speed boost, it outspeeds every single Pokemon that's unboosted except for Regilaki. Of course, Regilaki outspeeds everything. Solar Power is for Synergy with Sebli. What does Sebli do? It has, uh, I think the item is interchangeable. I ran safety goggles before on this Sebli and it worked, but I think since the team doesn't really require any other focus session to be run on any other Pokemon, like Regilaki and Mingus don't really want focus session on this thing. Uh, so, Sableye with focus Ash and what it's like, pitiful bulk otherwise, is I think the most logical thing you can do. Brangster, of course, to give a uh, plus one priority to every single move Sableye is using. So, Taunt to stop the Trick Room, Sunny Day to set up the Sunny Day for Charizard and make the not only Charizard more threatening, but also make the rain matchup a bit more. A bit more robust. It's actually used alongside Regilaki. We're gonna be using against Tornogre, we're gonna be using Regilaki plus Sunny Day Sableye. Quash is actually surprisingly good against a lot of Trick Room teams as well. Uh, so basically, if opponent has like Red Rush and Trick Room with like Mimikyu plus uh, Mimikyu plus Amingus, Pergon 2 plus Amingus, whatever, uh, Trick Room setter plus Togekiss, we cannot really stop the Trick Room, and as a result, we're probably gonna be a result. Uh, uh, resulting to using Quash against the Trick Room. So basically, if we, for example, set up Sunny Day turn 1, we want shot to the Red Reaction turn 1 with the Charizard, and then they bring in, like, Calyrex Ice Rider in, and we can just Quash the uh, Calyrex Ice Rider. Maybe we may make you self proxy with Cherry Snake, but we're still... Uh, still, the Calyrex is going to be moving absolute last. We Quash it, and then Bloodfar just KOs it. So this applies for a lot of Trick Room Pokemon, because, like, Charizard's power is just so unparalleled. Uh, that it just can probably launch on every single Dynamax Trick Room user, except for like Gigalith, but we do not really talk about Gigalith. And if it's, uh, if Charizard is endangered by some like rock, rock move, and Charizard cannot launch on the Pokemon, like Landorus, for example, uh, you cannot really kill uh, uh, Assault with Landorus with its Sun Beasted attack, we can just burn the Landorus, and then the Rock Fall won't KO us. Uh, if you're, uh, if you're thinking like, how well are we going to take that? Granon's max attack, max rockfall, does about 80% of Charizard with burns. So, uh, I think that's pretty good. I think Charizard survives additional turn, gets additional attack off. It can get really scary. And if you're wondering why, I'm run why am I running max special defense, I think it's optimization against the rain team. So we take the water spout a bit better in sun. We take hurricane a bit better in sun. Uh, if it hits, that is. Uh, and we take Thunderbolt from Regilaki a bit better, although I doubt we're going to survive it if against Tornogo you're going to see we're going to be setting up Electric Train. So I don't think we're going to be living uh, Life Orb, Thunderbolt, Electric Train, Transistor, Stab Boosted Thunderbolt from opponent Regilaki. But let's get into Regilaki. This is again very standard set since we already took the... Actually, this is supposed to be a Timid, excuse me. Uh, since we already took the... 
uh, Life Orb by Charizard, and Charizard has just so much more coverage that Life Orb can take. Like, if he would just give a Life Orb to Regilecki, it's kind of a waste because we just got only one type of move, and really, Regilecki only really needs electric moves to function, so Magnet is the most uh, logical thing to give it and give Life Orb to Charizard. That's just logical. Other than that, the set is extremely standard. We won't protect for a momentum boosting. Volt Switch is again for momentum boosting. We can just take attack. Finish off some late games against like water types like a Volt Switch. Switch out in the third Pokemon. They KO that Pokemon. We then switch in the Regilek like, and finish off the water type without it getting even damaged. Uh, uh, or just uh, Volt Switch turn 1 and just preserve Regilek like, for later uh, while taking on some part of Pokemon like Kyogre. Uh, Electro is for again slowing down Pokemon below the below this Aeneas, this Landris, this Spade. It's extremely actually, it's ex gonna be actually pivotal to have Electro up against Cataract Shadow Rider as you're gonna see later. And Thunderbolt is just for good damage. You might be thinking like we might run Rising Voltage just for a mo much more high powered uh, Dynamax move. So yeah, Rising Voltage is actually 140 base power max, great, 140 base power max Lightning in Dynamax form. Uh, but Thunderbolt is just so much overall useful in uh, all other situations other than Dynamax, which we're going to be Dynamax and Rachel, like, realistically only like, realistically against only Tornogus, so Thunderbolt is just so much better. And with max speed, we just speed up with as many Rachel, like, as we can, and we outspeed a lot of like stuff you would not even believe we can outspeed. So yeah, we, for example, outspeed plus one speed Thunderous uh, after a single max airstream, we're still going to be outspeeding that, so... Yeah, that's a, kind of a magic of Regilecki, outspeeding all of these Pokemon at plus one speed. And without timid max speed, you're not gonna really, you're not gonna be really able to accomplish that. That's the Charizard kind of call, because Regilecki covers the Charizard's uh, water weakness as well. Now, let's get into the more bulky call. Landris is there for multiple reasons. I originally thought it's going to be our Sun counter action, but... Uh, and it ran like safety goggles as well to repel the... Sun mode, but I deny later I decided we're gonna be using Charizard plus Sebla against the Sun, and it's much more practical because we can just quash the Venusaur just one shot by Gmax Wildfire and set up Gmax Wildfire as a result as well. It's much more practical. So I just decided to give Landris Assault Vest and make it like your usual bulky Pokemon. With Max Quake and Airstream, it can boost very good it can boost special finds and speed, which are both very useful stats. Rock Slide gives it like the Fabled Quake Slide combination, which hits pretty much everything in the game except for like, what did they say, uh, Bronzong and Flygon, uh, so yeah, this is pretty good coverage, and with such a high uh, like power from Adam and Max attack, you're really gonna be hitting pretty much everything in the game for really big damage, and you turn is just for boosting momentum and maybe just going for Max Luther by against some uh, special attack or heavy teams like with Calyrex, but no, it's better to use like Airstream against Calyrex or Max Quake, but you get the idea, we can just go in DD if we really need to. And I think that's pretty funny. So why, like, Max Attack also allows us to one shot like G-Max Venus, Dynamax or G-Max Venusaur, whatever you want to call it, in one hit. Uh, as long as the Venusaur is 4 HP, we're gonna be one shotting it with the uh, Max Attack. Only Max Attack can do that. Uh, with this speed and most one, we are outspeeding Thunderous at plus one speed. So basically, Thunderous' speed is 179, and if we uh, Electro Web it, it's going to be 119, which makes it our makes us outspeed it. And if we get Max Air Stream off, we're going to be 180, which makes it out makes us outspeed Thunderous by one point again. Same applies for Tornadus, which on Tornogger teams very usually runs Isolant. So uh, yeah, that's it. And rest of the bulk is put into the put into the uh, bulk, basically. This makes us, like, get an even number here, so Assault Mask gets us extra point in special defense, uh, four defense for, uh, for extra, uh, flexibility and, like, optimization, and rest of it is put into HP. Uh, Mingus is running, like, extremely standard side as well, close monk for removing weakness, possible beast, and uh, Xenius Beast, Sport and Rage Powder are bread and butter. Protect makes us do like 50-50s against Xenius. So basically, with Xenius together, we can, for example, the well, opponent has to double up something, and if they double up the wrong thing and it protects, Xenius gets Geomancer Beast. And if they target down, double target Xenius, and it protects, we can get a Spore off. So it creates some very powerful 50-50s alongside Xenius. And the rest of the set is uh, to give it more special bulk so we can, oh yeah, we, can take it. we get a... Uh, extra point here because we are just 
adding a nature to multiple of 10. As you can see here, we get extra point. Instead of one, we get two extra points. I've done that on a lot, on, uh, a lot of spreads here. I, no, I didn't actually. But we're gonna show it maybe on Z yeah, we're gonna show it on Zenis as well. And rest of the uh, rest of the EV spread is put in the uh, defense. And Cover Barry is because of the overabundance of max air streamers in the meta game, we just wanna stop those, alright? We just want to uh, either just make opponent not use max air stream or use max air stream and get sport. Uh, so for example, Sunrise is forced to go for a uh, G Max Fireball, which uh, makes it just not get an airstream boost and suddenly Zernis can outspeed it, Ladris cannot outspeed it with plus one, but you get the idea. Uh, what are we trying to attempt here? And last Pokemon we actually cover is Xenius. So why are we running Flash Cannon, you might say? So yeah, I've, I've been one of the most, maybe the biggest pioneers of running the old uh, set on Xenius. Definitely plus Moon Blast, but uh, I have, by my own testing, I've discovered how brutal, how brutal and ridiculously brutal you can get with Max Steel Spike on Xenius. And how ridiculously bulky you can get. So basically, the speed investment allows us to outspeed plus one base 100s at plus one speed. So basically, Charizard off a single max airstream reaches 250 speed. With this Xenius, we at plus two speed, we reach what 252 speed, outspeeding it by two points. A uh, special attack is again, you see here, we get two extra points, and rest of the EV spread was kind of put in the defense. I thought it was just right to put in a lot of EVs in the defense, because we're already just going to get so much more special defense uh, with the pl with the plus two from GM and C, and I thought like getting it more defense is better. And I still think it's just more optimal. Uh, so basically with this EV spread we're extremely physically bulky, now for GM and we're going to be specially bulky, and now for single max steel spike we're going to be extremely physically bulky as well. Uh, just so, really the bulk of Xenia's really, really snowballs after the after a few boosts. And Moonblast from Max Starfall is, is extremely intimidating as well. Like if we, even if we get like snarled, uh, plus one Max Starfall still has extremely high chance to one shot in Sinor that is not optimized to take on a Xenia's in this meta game. And I'm gonna tell you. Uh, because of the Xenius and how unpopular it is in the current meta game, not a lot of Incineroars are prepared for Xenius and thus can get extremely easily one shot by the plus one max starfall. Uh, and yeah, then just uh, Xenius really snowballs under control, even a plus one special attack. And 30 aura gives it like extra boost to the uh, extra boost to the, uh, the fairy, type, fairy type attack moves, and it's just ridiculous. Overall, with Steel Spikes, you, after a single max Steel Spike, you already take Behemoth Blade from Zation, which is ridiculous. Like, Behemoth Blade from, from Zation is supposed to just be the most powerful move in the game to take on any Dynamaxer. And after a single max Steel Spike, you just take the attack. <laughs> Alright, that's that's just ridiculous, yeah. Uh, and it's super effective as well, which is even funnier at this point. Yeah, basically the X and Y and Sun Moon Legendaries are really bulky, like you can see here, like base 126 HP, 95 defense, 98 special defense. These Pokemon are really bulky and can take advantage of that with Steel Spikes and stuff like that, and Gym and so of course in the case of Xenius. So yeah, I think that's this is the wall team. I'm not going to be covering like alternatives. I think the, uh, for example, the Amingus and Sun or Landris Xenius variant is extremely, st like, it's so self-explanatory and so like, exploitable by every single archetype that I, first off, don't recommend running it, and second off, it's extremely exploitable because of how predictable it is. And if you want to run it, it's very predictable how to run it. Just lead in Sinor Xenius, lead in Mega Xenius. It's extremely predictable, and I think it's lothable as well, like, lothably easy to maneuver around, uh, with your, as you as a player, or uh, playing against it. So yeah, that's the Xenius team explanation, I'm, uh, and now we're gonna go over the replays I prepared for you, explaining the metagame matchups. Against Thornogger, you're gonna be seeing me explore a lot of worst case scenarios, but uh, Sampli plus Regilicle and no alone should be enough to basically assure you the victory. Like, the, the, worst, like, the worst case scenario is, but it realizes that uh, opponent can only remove the sun by going for a Max Geysir and Dynamax and Kyogre to survive the attack turn 1. Since everything in the back is just so... so really useless against Regilaki. Regilaki gets one-shotted by Regilaki. 
as absurd as it sounds, and we got the help of Quash, so it's actually really difficult for that Rajalika to get their attack off, and if they bring in something like Artana, we can just burn him with Sableye, so it's really just, opponent is really in a tough spot at all times, and as a result, we can just corner the opponent very easily with the sub-play plus Rajalaki. So Dynamaxing the Kyogre Totem 1 is the best play for the opponent, I think. Uh, well, the rest of the game is pretty self-explanatory. Oh uh, yeah, so what are we trying to pivot into here is the Lanarus Light games. It's, it's like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, by the way, Hurricane would not have KO'd here, I believe. Uh, Maybe this one would have KO'd, but not before the life orb, it would not have KO'd. And at this point you're seeing here, like, yeah, may maybe the tornado says Ice Wind, but we first off we just outspeed it with Landris, and Regulike can do any damage to Landris. Uh, usually Regulike doesn't really uh, carry around a Hyper Beam, and all, all its other good moves are really the only the electric moves. So yeah, I'm exploring different kind of scenario here, with Regulike plus Kyoga. Uh, it's still about the same scenario. Basically, I'm going to like it just does some annoying stuff with Electro Lab, but it's almost exactly the same matter, boys. Oh, yeah, but it just crits me here. But because of how fast Reggie like is, we can just. Yeah, for example, I did not risk the Kyogre Max Guarding here at all. Uh, so, yeah, it's like. Yeah. And I thought Amigus would be fed here for the opponent, because I, I think, like, for example, Xenius is. Counteract in Xenius in the back with something like Amigus is very useful. Also, we just kind of like almost freaking die here, but yeah, Kaga of course naturally protects because the Sunadai hit by boosted attack would just get Kaga, even though it has such a high special defense, but really the sub just charges out attacks are so powerful. Here I'm again not risking the ability of Kaga to actually outspeed me. I'm instead just going for an earthquake here and it's just gonna work out. Uh yeah, and the rest of the game, it's just going to be Cartana not being able to finish off Lanaris, and we're just going to go. My mom just came home, so... Yeah, uh, alright, so that's that's this game plan. Uh, if you're wondering what that uh, sound was, oops. Alright, so Sun has a lot of possible modes it can go for. Uh, but I think, like, against again, Trook Room Lead's best lead is really going with Groudon plus Burgon 2, although it looks a bit counterproductive, as I'm gonna see, uh, as I'm gonna show you, but if they would lead Burgon 2 and Sinor, I would be able to just go for Sunny Day, Gmax Vault for one shot the Burgon 2, and that would be the end of the mode. What would Sinor do is, like, parting shot to Groudon, which takes Gmax Vault for damage, and then just, the game is over. It's just over. So going with Incineroar Burgon 2 is not the way to go. And we can taunt the Burgon 2 at any point as well, but uh, uh, in this scenario we're instead just gonna be Dynamax and Charizard, I believe, and then we're gonna burn the Groudon. Yeah, so the Rockfall doesn't KO us, Gmax Cloud Fart is just so powerful, with all those boosts from Sun, Solar Power, Stab, and whatever, the move is just so powerful, it just one-shots Burgon 2 even. And Groudon takes a lot of residual damage, and we're, we're gonna see how much residual damage the bottom and the back are gonna take. Uh, Incineroar just gets one shot by the Max Quake. We don't even care that Charizard gets knocked out here. It has scared two Pokemon and set up G Max Vault for like two more turns. And at this point, the game is uh, effectively over. Whatever is in the back cannot really match up against Xerneas. Uh, like, Lester has a good chance to do so. Venusaur, I think, would be pretty good as well, but uh, we would be able to probably just squash it and set up Geomancy, and we could, like, Landris in the back as well. It's just. They got a chance to win, but you just probably understand why it's just so. So one sided at this point. Yeah, because she's gonna go hyper fast. This was Moonblast. Glastier just can't take anything, and the game is effectively over. And against the mode of a Charizard. Uh, Charizard, Venusaur, Groudon, Venusaur, whatever. Uh, this is their possible lead. Mm. Right, by the way, I thought that against Charizard it's not unnecessary to just go for that because we got like. We basically got the better Charizard made right here with a Quash Sabline, like Taunt from Sabline. So Venusaur Charizard lead would be just completely invalidated by just going for like Taunt on Venusaur and then Max Air we would try Max Air Streams and the next time. We would try max air streams. I would quash their Charizard and just prevent even a speed typing a factor that could make me lose the game. And yes, Charizards scare each other. Uh, so yeah, uh, here I'm just gonna go for a very smart move. Uh, 
Is it kind of controlled by Ocean Sense Wings or could it go for Sleep Powder and Sapply? But I doubt it because Charizard is just so dangerous, opponent cannot feasibly ignore it. Here we're just gonna burn the ground on turn 1, G-Max Float for the Venusaur, just, uh, just get it out of the way and uh, yeah, this game is pretty much over by this point. Is we're gonna, is we're gonna say we're just gonna be one, I think we're gonna be one shotting Charizard here, Quash, prevent the speed dice from even happening, one shotting the Charizard, Groudon then has to carry the Charizard or else it's just gonna even cause more trouble. And in the back there is just, I, I believe there is just Incineroar in the back, just not doing anything. It's like, we just go for Xerneas, bring in this thing, opponent has to swat stands up to even match the power. Mean Blast actually just straight up carries Groudon and then just, this is just over. So yeah, this is the game plan against the Sun. Last real problematic archetype is really Shadow Rex. By the way, ignore the Chandelure, that's my... Like, no one runs Chandelure on a Calyrex Shadow Rider team, it's just me. I use that for like... The main, uh... Main idea to counteract is the Calyrex, Indeedee, Tundra's, Urshifu mode. Uh, it's the most important one to counteract, so let's focus on that. So yeah, Calyrex, turn 1. So against this slate, you just want to go for Electro Web turn 1. By the way, there's just not much... This slate is one of the few leads you can just pretty much say with absolute certainty. You're just gonna win if you just follow the game plan, because like... Hyper Offense teams just got like no room for adaptation whatsoever. And they are extremely like monotone, I would say, or like uh, they just follow easy game plan of just going for chaos. There is no switching, so it's extremely easy to get a game plan against this Pokemon. By the way, if you wonder what happened here, we slowed down the Calyrex, and then we just went for a speed, went for Airstream to make the Zonius outspeed the Calyrex Shadow Rider, set up a Geomancy, so uh, the Max Mindstorm does not chaos go our Zonius. And the second lead I wanted to cover is the uh, is the Tundra's Indeedee lead, which uh, you might think like, oh wow, Tundra's just gets a attack beast here. Yeah. There's actually a lot of the disgust turn one, but I'm just gonna uh, oh my goodness, sirens outside. I should shut down. I'll shut down the window up next time. So uh, for the next three plays, uh, but. Uh, Against this slate, you just really want to go for a electro up turn one and just scare the indeed it. Oh, actually no. Uh just watch this turn. So basically, the best turn one for the opponent, like uh Thunderous doesn't I would just say doesn't really fear Max Rockfall turn one. But instead the uh So yeah, basically Airstream plus Electro Up KO the Indeedy. And also because of the airstream uh, and electro up, we are outspeeding the Tundra's here and we're just going to be able to knock it out. So that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, a little bit of a problem here though. Calyrex plus Rushifu is dangerous. Uh, but with a Magnet Boost and us surviving the Aqua Jet from the Rushifu uh, uh, Rapid Strikes, we're able to actually survive the Aqua Jet and then just electro up it for a KO with Magnet Boost and electro up. And then Calyrex just gets finished off. So yeah, that's the... Game plan against Shadow Rider, and again, I'm sorry the window was opened. Uh, it was really uh, the air was dense here, so I just needed to breathe for a second. <laughs> the window has been shut, so nothing will disturb us in the rest of the replays. Uh, and this one is just—I think this one is just comical. How easy is the one this matchup? So observe. Just this is just—I don't—I don't, I don't think I have to even talk about how uh, even talk to. Make you see how ridiculous on one side of this matchup is. Uh, by the way, the team, uh, this team can have Venus or Torkoal on their team, but you just counteract that with Quash plus G Max Wildfar. Um, that buffet might have been like good candidate for them to Dynamax, but I highly doubt it. Like that it would be that useful uh, since we got like a Mingus in the back, like being able to redirect and then like Xenius in the back is also really scary for that type of Fini. And yeah, we could just we can just quash a Max Quake to just make our choice out extremely resilient against the type of Fini. Uh, yeah, the, the, really the best way to really counteract Dapu Fini. Uh, like if you want to use Dapu Fini as a counteraction, just Dynamax it and like Annoy the Sabli with the fact that it has to set up Sunny Day all the time and make your ally next to Dapu Fini Make the time, make the time be useful. So I think this would be like uh, kind of a tip for Mimirex to deal with this. But um, yeah, it's just kind of one-sided. This matchup is because apart from Feeny, they really got no other Pokemon that can actually do anything about the Charizard. 
Uh, to make Feeny work as a Dynamaxer, you need to have some allies that are capable of doing something. Alright, against the Lapras and Zacian. Well, I'm not gonna go and, ex and explain why is Lapras plus Incineroar unviable against Charizard Sableye. Basically, what happens is you just set up Sunny Max Quake one shot to the Incineroar. And then uh, Lapras doesn't do any damage for us with the game, and it's just completely useless. Oh, uh, so she wants a beam and play your Charizard, but we're just gonna quash that, and no one will ever care. So yeah, if you see Landorus and Mingus late though, your best bet is to just switch to your own Landorus and just taunt the Mingus so it doesn't go for any kind of stupid spores. And yeah, Rockfall is required to stop the Charizard and one, or else it just gets completely like mad against the against this thing. I thought the next best thing opponent can do is just switch to Zapdos. Oh yeah, by the way, this this team I took from Victoria Road, which you see website, has a Lamberry Landorus, so it's like... Uh, yeah, you see like a bunch of worst case scenarios happening to us, yet we are still just so ahead. Uh, here we're just going to be Dynamax on the Charizard, immediately going for Max God, so we just stole out one last turn of Max Rockfalls. Opponent is again kind of required to just try to take down the Charizard, or else bad stuff happens for their team. Uh, you might as well just go fast right now. Rock, Rock Slide doesn't do any damage, of course it doesn't. Thunderbolt does a lot of damage, but Mudfar just simply removes those Abdos, and here comes the residual damage right here. It's kind of funny. I, here, I think I was supposed to go for a switch to Landorus to intimidate Landorus, so the Rock, Rock Slide would not KO Charizard. By the way, again, worst case scenario, Amigus protects here. That's pretty bad. Uh, so yeah, I'm switching the ladder is here, toning the Amigus so it doesn't go for any kind of sport shenanigans. Rock, Rock Slide doesn't do any damage at this point. And Pollen Puff starts healing back, ladder is back up. I might as well go hyper fast right now. It's like, the game is just, like, it's basically over, but the opponent is basically trying to add something. Alright, we just get a gem and beast. Pollen Puff, because it's Pollen Puff, it cannot have the... The uh, Amigus cannot have close mark, and we just win the against Session. Even though Session has a good matchup against us in late game, we just still manage to win the game off by such a large margin. And yes, the the Session's team Landorus does not have protect, so it could not have protected against the Moonblast on turn eight. So yeah, this is the game plan against Session Lapras. All right, Evolta, you might think that this is a very positive matchup, but like, all right, so Celestia can be pretty much Metagross with max Rockfall, it doesn't really matter what, what do you picture as a Celesteela, it's pretty much the same, it applies the same game plan. So basically what they're going to try to do is nuzzle past max Rockfall it to outspeed it and one shot the Charizard. Uh, here we just like, yeah, it's like, I try to prevent nuzzle so there is like, we could quash both of these opponents, but like, uh, nuzzle prevents the ability to just, uh, uh, get fully paralyzed here, but now we just put on your impulses to make the Celestial maybe survive the attack. Rockfall, KS the Charizard, the Celestial gets the Beast Beast, but with Life Orb Recoil and Gmax Wildfar, the Celestial will just fall. Elm Steep will fall. Lot of, lot of rings, but great movies. Anyways, uh, uh, good will win against the evil here, regardless of whatever happens. Unfortunately, this Avaltal is surprisingly annoying to deal with. Uh, because of the Oblivion Wing and the Veltal being able to outspeed. Anyways, I'm gonna just uh, just make the replay go a little bit faster. We missed the below us, which takes away a lot of residual damage. Type of Phoenix switches in. Oblivion Wing happens against the Xenius. I think we can just get full parity, right? Yeah. Uh, so more worst case scenario scenarios happening right here. But with the sand and a lot of stuff, like it's just so bad for them. There's just so much residual damage. Again, I predict the type of Fini protecting here, but it didn't protect. Uh, basically, if we, did, we didn't get full parried by the nuzzle, we would have already won so hard. Raju is forced to KO Xenius here, because Xenius would otherwise outspeed and KO the type of Fini. Earthquake does a lot of damage. Type of Fini has leftovers, so it doesn't recover from Wiki Berry. And we just punished this game off against uh, the Apophini with Earthquake. So yeah, a lot of worst case scenarios, yet we still are able to win against even the worst case scenarios. So yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Oh yeah, other Xenius team. Let's see how much are we gonna destroy this, all right? I'm just gonna go like fast immediately. Uh, again, uh, ignore this, this is like a Brutal Swing. It's, it doesn't have Brutal Swing. Oh yeah, we're just gonna apply absolutely the same game plan as we did to this Asian team. Yeah, nothing really happens here. 
Instead, I'm like, I believe I actually won the four. Darren match with Landers here. Yeah, uh, so we're gonna burn the Landers. This Landers doesn't even have Lumber because it has a Salt Mask. Oh uh, uh, well, <laughs> Max Quake does just so much damage to Xerneas. You know what, let's go hyper fast. We just don't even need to explain stuff. Uh, Landorus is completely useless, so it has to switch. I covered for a switch. Uh, I'm going to switch with a taunt here. Uh, Max Rester doesn't do a lot much damage. Nothing really happens here. I'm provide I'm not switching into Izanius here on purpose because the Amigus could poison a bit sludge bomb and do big damage. Heatwave just completely obliterates the opponent and Reg like it just like cannot touch Landorus and as a result, we just win the game. So yeah, this this match was mega one-sided because we just got the longer end of the stick against the Xenius team. Dialga is one of the bad like also like one of the bad matchups opponent has. Like uh so yeah, uh, I think it's better to lead against Char with Charizard Sabla here since they really the Dialga's only mode like late that can deal with uh Xenius is in Cinnor Dialga. This is the only way they can deal with Xenius. And the incinerator has to be Snarl as well. So, and yeah, if you're wondering, like, what does Sabli uh, Charizard do against this? Well, it just got completely murders this. Uh, Sunny Day, uh, Max Quake just one shots Incineroar. And Dialga then just does uh, what? Nothing, because the. Uh, well, because the. Uh, Charizard and both Charizard and Sabli are gonna be at plus one speed. Then we just G Max Vault Farm, whatever, for a major damage and. We just won the game shortly after. Yeah, this game is just like... Uh, for the first... I think this is the for the first time in replays I'm actually going with Xenia Slate. Yeah, this is just how good the Charizard Sabli lead is against the majority of the, majority of the mad game right now. We're not going to be even Dynamax in the uh, Xenius here. We're just going to be Dynamax in Charizard. Making the their life even more rotten with the um, G-Max Wild Far. And yeah, uh, we are pretty much going to be winning this game at this point. Yeah, Valdfar is just gonna knock them out next turn. Flash Cannon, Calm Mind, Muddy Water would not help, and we just win the game. Oh yeah, there's Incineroar in the back still. Oh yeah, Max Quake just does so much damage. And Earthquake just punishes it off. So yeah, this ma this matchup is also very one-sided. Not only from the Charizard standpoint, but but rarely from the Xenius standpoint as well. This is one of the matchups I don't think Xenius can win even like, cannot even come close to winning. Uh, because of the Sogolau, it's just Sogolau's, but light screen is just so invincible. Uh, but times have changed, we got Sabli plus Charizard to deal with this annoying Sogolau plus Grimmsnarl mode. So I think the best play for both of us turn 1 is to just try to burn the other one, uh, and light screen up, like just, while it was, oh like Sunny Day is probably the best one, yeah. But they'll just set up light screen guaranteed, we're going to, Thunderbolt is going to slow us down, but Quash is going to make them even slower, and I think this turn we're just gonna be exchanging down maxes here. But not really, because we got the G-Max Wildfire under their feet, and they set up a sand for even more residual damage uh, on their side. And now, since Alcala is was their real on like really, they will it was their only real check to the uh Xenius. Now we're just gonna just go for Xenius sweep. And yeah, I think that's the rest of the game just being explained. Also, by the way, this is Life Orb Feeny, and I'm gonna note that this Grimstral does not have Spirit Break. I took this again. Uh, this team was made by like great player, and that player thought that the Grimstral doesn't really Grimstral doesn't really need Spirit Break, but uh, yeah, I think it would have didn't wouldn't really change much with the game either. Uh, I'm again taking much worst case scenarios here, like for example. Taking on the Grimmsnarl first, even if it had like to simulate the possibility of Spirit Break, but yeah, I don't think it would have changed the game all that much. We would have still just completely massacred the opponent. Xenius might have gotten KO'd earlier, but Landris plus Sabla would have probably been able, probably would have been able to finish up the game as well. Uh, and with like how how much advantage we got in this matchup, I think just one prediction, one good prediction from us pretty much means game over for them, so. Yeah, I think this matchup is still very favorable, favorable in our, uh, to us, basically. And now let's go over the how to beat it section, so enjoy that one. And last but not least, the Conractions to Xenius. So, Conracting Xenius is surprisingly easy, as long as they don't have Charizard. 
And I'm gonna tell you, not a lot of these Xenius teams have Charizard. I've battled like over 800 battles in my preparation for Players Cup 3. And I think I faced like one or two or even none of my memory is faulty. So I don't really, really care about Zard Conrash. I'm gonna cover it in a second, but you, I think you should really uh, focus on Xenius Conrash. A lot of teams got a lot of uh, natural Conrashes for it. Like Sokolo team got Steel Tap Sokolo on its own. That's enough. Uh, some team, uh, Kalga teams already have like Katana on the team uh, with Talent. Uh, so, and some team just got Charizard and Venusaur on its own. But if you do, if your team is not naturally doesn't naturally match up well against Aeneas, here here are some good tips. So of course, Metagross is probably the most reliable counteraction to this, since it well basically it hits uh, Zen really hard. It hits. Lanarus and Amoongus really hot, and it hits Incineroar really hot, so that's all enough, like, it really is hard to take down as well, because, like, if you want to make it even harder, and not reliant on Dynamax, you can give it a Salt Vice and, like, Zen Headbutt. I showed that, like, last video with the Volatile team, and it worked miraculously well against the standard Xenius. I think this, I think Metagross is the best one with a Salt Vice, or... Uh, weakness policy. If you got Talman team, I would prob probably recommend running Cortana instead of the Metagross and giving Cortana max speed. And uh, with that, you're able to outspeed plus two Xenius in Talman with Cortana and get hit it really hard with uh, uh, Max Steel Spike. And Max Steel Spike allows you to take the Flare Blitz from Incinerary better, Max Quick for Lander is better, and you're completely immunized to Amingus, which normally carries Poison Dive, Myth, and Spore and Rage Powder, which, again, Kartana is completely immunized to because of its grass typing. If you are into some other counteraction, like Venusaur plus Turkle are fantastic counteractions as well. Especially if you run some speed on Turkoal, making you outspeed the Amingus and being able to eruption it out of Oblivion before it can even get a Spore off on Turkoal. I ran that in multiple, I think I ran it like Players Cup 2 and got to the qualify for the finals, so it's really a legitimate strategy. Uh, and it can rack the Glaster uh, at that mad game, but right now it can rack something is still very fine. So yeah, eruption, just eruption out of oblivion, and Venusaur is completely oblivious to a lot of the Xenius team. You take the Max Earth Stream from Landorus with some bulk, you take the Flare Blitz from Incineroar even Sun, even in Sun with some bulk. Uh, this is why I'm showing this bulk. It's exactly enough to take both of these attacks, and you just get Max Ooze off. G Max Spine Lash off is actually very good against Xenius that. Gym ends it up because it's not Dynamax that done. And since it's not Dynamax, it's going to take one sixth of the damage the turn it set up after it set up. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is like great counteraction as well. And if you want some red reaction to the team, Amingus still does the job fantastically. Uh, with this amount of like, with Cover Berry, it takes Max Airstream, and with this amount of bulk, you're you're pretty much sure that Flare Blitz from Incineroar won't hurt at all, and you're able to go get a Spore off or Class Mog off if the opponent Xenius team got a Dapu Fini. So, yeah, that's these are fantastic, all absolutely fantastic interactions to Xenius. Now, if you're feeling Charizard mode, uh, here are some tips to use. If you uh, if you really feel the Charizard mode instead, I think Dapu Fini. Uh, that you Dynamax is pretty good counteraction to Charizard as well. It takes two max air streams from Charizard, so it uh, stalls for time while while doing a big damage to it. And if you're thinking like, oh, what about max overgrowth Charizard? No. Charizard has at least Life Orb Charizard has better business to attend with Max Quake, Max Airstream, and G Max Wildfire. Uh are so just more superior coverage moves that they're just gonna run it instead and they need protect as well so Fini gets on a 3 hit KO'd and it does big damage back and it disrupts the ray disrupts the sun with rain so Zeppelin has to all the time set the back up stalling for even more time I've covered Tarnantar a lot in previous videos but again Tarnantar is pretty good counteraction to the Charizard mode it cannot even get quashed or burned so if you're like running Choice Scarf with Stone Edge you should not be able to be stopped by Willowbus or Quash from Zeppelin uh, but other than, other than that, Max Quake does no damage. Like, in Sun it does get damage, but like, you get the idea. You just go back and it's all fine after that. And Regilecki, uh, with Focus Sash, can stop G-Max Wildfire and then just go for big damage with Thunderbolt. Uh, Quash plus Max Quake might be a bit more annoying, but in that case, you stop. G-Max Wildfire doesn't even finish you off. 
you're still hanging on with focus sash and you still get thunderbolt off and your pokemon next to you still gets attack off so yeah these are some common counteractions to this archetype and hopefully you enjoyed today's video next week there is not going to be any metagame monday but i prepared different kind of content for you instead i got uh i got like bunch of personal stuff happening to me so and Players Cup free as well, qualifier happening to me, so I would I don't have really much time to record Metagame Monday next week, so I pre-recorded like five videos of the new series, so I might as well upload like three of them in upcoming weeks. Hopefully you're gonna enjoy this and I'll catch you next time. See ya!